I'm at James M. Brown Elementary School in Walhalla, South Carolina, and I'm speaking with Elijah Addis. Elijah, thanks for coming out and showing me the beehives. You're welcome. Um, you are, I believe, your teachers, your STEM teachers, beekeeper assistant. Um, that's kind of a big job, I think, for a fourth grader. As soon as I st started being the seventh assistant, I started learning more and more about bees. If we didn't have bees, most of the food in the world, like seven, probably like 75% of the food in the world wouldn't be like able to grow. So many people are afraid of bees. Um, what can we do to reassure them that bees aren't really after them? What bees are really trying to do is they're just trying to do their jobs, what, what they were made to do. And most of the time when people get stung, it's because they're messing with the bees. Ah. So if we give them courtesy, then they aren't really interested in us because in order to make honey, what's the main thing that they need to do? Usually they need to go around to like plants and stuff so they can collect pollen and bring it back to make their food, okay. make their honey. Do you um, help smoke the bees so that they calm um, down? Does that make it easier to go up to them? Yeah, it does. It does a lot. So when, first of all, when you're coming out here, the first time I came out here, I, the first thing I puff with smoke is that little hole right there yes. where all the bees are gathering right there. First I puffed that, then I took the top off of it, and then I puffed the smoke down in there, and then they were calmer and they were getting back inside inside of there. So, and then I took the lid, then I took the top frame off, and then and then I took the hive tool and I put it beside the frame, and then. I pulled it up and then I grabbed the frame and then I then I did the other side, then I grabbed that other side. And then there's like this little metal thing that holds the frames. Oh. So when I picked it up, I put it on the frame and then when I did that, I could like look down and get a better view of them. Do you have some phrases that you use to reassure people about being around the bees sometimes? <laughs> Make sure to be safe. Make sure to be, be ready. Safe. <laughs> and be brave. Be safe, be ready, and be brave. Well, I think I'm going to um, speak with your teacher, and then after that, I guess we're going to completely put on our suit and um, go over and look at the bees. Courtney, um, you're the STEM teacher here, which I thought was like making robots and things like that, um, but we're outside in beekeeping suits. Yes, we are. STEM covers a lot of different uh, fields, that science, technology, engineering, and math, and so as part of our science curriculum, we promote the Bee Calls curriculum that they have given to us through a grant. And so the best way for us to learn is in a hands-on way about bees. And so we're out here in our protective gear, uh, ready to go inside of our bee house. What do you think working with the bees and even just becoming aware of the importance of honeybees and other pollinators, what are some of the things that you want your students to learn from this experience? I want our students to know that without bees, we would not have 75% of our food. Um, and so one of my main questions that I ask whenever I start teaching about bees is raise your hand if you like to eat. And <laughs> everyone's hand goes up. Um, no matter how picky of an eater that you are, you have to have honeybees. And if we don't have honeybees, so many things in our environment would collapse without it. And so my main goal is for our students to know how essential something so small as a honeybee is to our environment. And we're having a lot of threats and pressures on our environment now. Do you is this an opportunity to you for you to aware raise awareness of that as well? Yes. During the curriculum with the Bee Cause Project, we talk about how pesticides can hurt our honeybees and how whenever you're at home you do need to be aware of the pesticides, you know, that your parents are putting out if you're helping them outside. And then my students can also communicate with their parents of what they've learned in STEM about why certain pesticides are not good for honeybees and how it's not necessarily intentional that you killed a honeybee, um, but we do need to be aware of what we're putting in the environment too. There's 
school is difficult. We had COVID. We, I mean, school, you know, is, there are a lot of kids. There's a lot of activity, mm -hmm. a lot of noise going on sometimes, even at a great school like this. And can a activities like this help kids learn throughout the day to sometimes take that breath and kind of settle into a mindful state? Do you think it does things for them emotionally as well? Yes, I believe so. Being, for me, being into a honeybee hive is very calming. Um, the noise that you hear, the buzzing from their wings that you'll hear in just a couple minutes, to me it's soothing. Um, and to me it just creates a calming effect and it does for our student beekeepers as well. And then y'all um, share the honey with the community through um, some efforts that y'all do. So I imagine that the awareness of this, you think it's filtering into the community beyond just the students? Yes, absolutely. Our students designed our honeybee label that we placed on all of our honeybee jars during STEM class as a part of our technology design uh, courses that we did. Then our whole school voted on their favorite and then uh, we were able to use that honeybee label on all of our honeybee jars that were given out to the public. Even the kids who don't get to come out here within your classroom, there's a big old crazy looking contraption with um, things growing in it. What's that all about? Yes, we have an observation hive, which is a glass uh, sealed case uh, where our students can safely observe from the inside. Uh, right now we have two student beekeepers, uh, one of which is here and they, the two student beekeepers actually work in our five hives out here with me. And then the rest of our students are able to participate by seeing our honeybees. It's a whole colony of bees that are inside of the hallway. And I believe your next hope is that you may have a garden set up to um, attract pollinators. Yes, our goal is to create a space of wildflowers that are native to Oconee County, where our honeybees don't have to travel nearly as far uh, as what they're doing right now. And so that way we can make an even better environment for our bees here at Jameson Brown. For something like this to happen, you don't get to just make a decision. I mean, this is, these are kids, people have certain ideas about bees, safety. I imagine that your whole community here, the academic community, had to approve and support you in this project. Yes, our superintendent from the top down from the district office um, and our principals here, Ms. Thrift and Mr. Seedslag and Ms. Garland, uh, all had to give approval before we let uh, our two student beekeepers in our hives along with their parents' consent as well. Um, and in order to do that, it was just education on how we can be safe and how our students can be safe in these hives as they do something that has not been done here before. One of your beekeepers, grandmothers, I understand, makes a just marvelous biscuit. And um, maybe you should take some of those jars of honey and some biscuits to your um, administrators and principals to remind them of how happy they are to have this program on campus. Oh, we certainly will whenever we harvest again during the late summer. So thanks for letting me come. Thanks for being here.